Okay, this is the 2014 multiple choice. Okay, this is the 2014 multiple choice. Um, I'm just going to try and run this down and so you might find it suddenly judders about and that's because I've obviously made a mistake and I've had to edit out some waffle that didn't happen. Okay, right, question one. Which structural feature is found in a plant cell and not in an animal cell? The important thing here is not. Um, so an animal cell has a nucleus, an animal cell has the cell membrane and an animal cell has the cytoplasm. It does not, however, have a cell wall. So... Okay, which line in the table below identifies the direction of diffusion of the three substances during muscle contraction? Okay, so that means that we are doing the work. Okay, they're doing respiration. So in terms of what we need, I would need to have glucose coming in and I would also need to have oxygen coming in and then what you would be producing would be carbon dioxide which would come out. Okay, which is why the answer is D. Oh, sorry, spinning this down. Question three. Diagram below represents a genetically engineered bacterial cell. Okay, we've got a nice little picture of it. The structure labelled X is. Okay, so we've got chromosome, plasmid, ribosome and nucleus. Can we get rid of the nucleus straight away because that does not exist in a bacterial cell? Okay, this is the chromosome. Okay, so not that. And then they've got plasmid and ribosome. Plasmid is the correct answer. That's an extra piece of DNA that is that you can engineer. Ribosomes would have been tiny little dots that are doing protein synthesis, not a big circle. So, not that. Okay, the light energy for photosynthesis is captured by straight knowledge thing we need to know for this one. So you should know that we take water and carbon dioxide as our raw materials and then we have light energy which is captured by chlorophyll. Okay, making glucose and oxygen. But what we need to know is chlorophyll. Okay. Diagram below represents a human brain. Which line in the table below identifies structures one, two, and three of the human brain? Okay, so let's look at what we've all got here. So one is pointing to the big section of your brain that does all the thinking. Okay, this is your cerebrum. So that's, you know, it's all your thoughts, it's your decisions, it's, oh, that's a very weird spelling of decisions, it's your memory. Okay, everything about you being you up in the cerebrum. Down below that, you've got this thing that looks like a kind of leaf because it's been cut through in section. Otherwise, it looks like a kind of little kind of lined version of that. Okay, this is your cerebellum. It's all about balance. And lastly, we have over here your medulla, which you're using to regulate your breathing and heart rate. So all super important things. And we are looking for where that matches up. And that is D. Question six, proteins have different functions. Which of the following statements identifies a protein and its function? Okay, so they have got protein in bold, which is why I can get rid of D, because cellulose is not a protein. This is actually a true statement that cellulose provides strength and structure to a plant cell wall. And in fact, it's a really nice definition of a cell wall and then also tells you what plant cell walls are made of which you need to know so that's quite a nice wee statement but it is not a protein right so hormones enzymes and antibodies are all proteins but now we're looking for what each of these things do okay so we're looking for hormones carry oxygen around the body that's not true hemoglobin does that enzymes carry chemical messages around the body and you're like no that's hormones Antibodies defend the body against disease. Yes, like that one. Okay, so C. Question seven. Which of the diagrams below identifies neurons and the direction of travel of nerve impulses? So this is a, not even a, a reflex arc, but it is only showing the three things that you would see in a reflex arc. So we have, it should go sensory, goes into your central nervous system, and then motor comes out. Okay, if it was a reflex arc, then we'd have an interneuron here. Okay, so so it's A. Because B, we've got motor coming in the way, which is wrong. And C, you've got motor coming in and sensory going out, both of which are wrong. And D, uh, I've got sensory going out, which is wrong. Okay. Which of the following, sorry, spinning down. Which of the following pairs of human cells have the same number of chromosomes? Okay, so basically every cell has the same number of chromosomes except for your gametes. 
Okay, so sex cells only have half of the chromosomes that you have in a normal other diploid cell. And actually, throw in another one, red blood cells don't have any because they are just fated to die because you get rid of the nucleus just so you can get more space for the hemoglobin. So, uh, same number. We've got liver cell, sperm cell. No, because the sperm cell only have half of what the liver cell has. Kidney cell and sperm cell, same deal. Kidney cell and liver cell, yes, we like that one. And just check, liver cell and egg cell, same reason as the sperm. Okay. Question nine. The table below shows the results of an investigation into the effect of temperature on egg laying in adult red spider mites. And we've got our table here. We've got the average length of egg laying period in, tight in days and the average number of eggs laid per female during the egg laying period. Okay. Now, nicely, this stays the same. Okay, it stays at 72 per day. Okay, we're going lead, average number lead during this. Okay, right. Um, as the temperature increases, the average number of eggs lead per female per day. Okay, so we've got, uh, sorry, try and find this in the right place. Um, so 24 days and it takes them to lay 72 eggs the at 20 degrees. 25 degrees, okay, we have 18 days to lay 72 eggs. And at 30 degrees, we have 12 days to lay 72 eggs. So each day, they must be laying more eggs as it gets hotter. So as temperature increases, it increases. It's a little bit of reading, but it's okay. Question 10. Following diagrams show a cell at different, four different stages of mitosis. Okay, so we've got, uh, we need to put them in the right order. So what we've got here is, this is your doubling. Uh, here's us lining up. Here's a pull apart. And this is a cell divide. Okay, so what do we need to do this in order? Uh, we need to double up. Okay, and then we need to line up, and then we need to pull apart, and then we need to divide. So one, three, two, four. Uh, one, three, two, four, A. There we go. Question 11. Which of the following diagrams represents the process of fertilization in plants? So, okay, being really careful, it's in plants. So, can we get rid of sperm and egg? Okay, and male zygote and female zygote to gamete makes no sense. Okay, the zygote is the fertilized um, egg cell or ovule, so it doesn't go zygote to go gamete, it goes the other way around. So this is wrong. Okay, and pollen and ovule to zygote, like that one, because it's about plants, and that's the male gamete, and that's the female gamete. Um, D is wrong because, well, one, it's not plants, because you've got an ovary, which you have in plants, but you don't have testes. Um, you've got the... the pollen is being made in the anthers okay um so these are not gametes as well these are the places where they're made so not that okay as definition um fertilization is the fusion of male and female gamete nuclei okay question 12 variation in a characteristic can either be discrete or continuous the range of heights and weights for a group of students were measured and recorded earlobe types were also examined and categorized into groups which line in the table below identifies the type of variation shown by each of these human characteristics? Okay, so we're looking for, are they continuous or discontinuous? Anything, anything that's got range and is measured, then we know that's continuous. So height, continuous, weight, continuous. And actually you're done at this point because it's A. But just to check, uh, they also said earlobe types were also examined and categorised into groups. And that's the whole point of discrete, because that means that they go into distinct groups. OK, so that's 12. Question 13, uh, part of the human respiratory system. This is actually out of the course content now on this one. So but I'm just going to run it anyway. Um, so A is the trachea or windpipe. OK, B is your is your bronchus or bronchi since they're plural. C, we're branching down to bronchioles. And D, we finally have our alveoli. So D. 
Okay, which line in the table below identifies abiotic and biotic factors? Okay, this is just a straight, make sure you know what you're talking about here. Abiotic factor is non-living, so light intensity, yep. Temperature, yep. Grazing, no. Predation, no, because both of those are being done by living things. Biotic, living things. pH, nope. Predation, yes. Light intensity, no. And grazing, yes. So our only two ticks would be at B. Question 15. A rabbit feeds on grass, is eaten by foxes and is a habitat for fleas. The statement above describes the rabbits. This is one that they, they like this, this question. Okay, we're looking for their niche. Okay, it doesn't describe their prey. Um, well, partly is also because the rabbit is the prey for foxes, but it isn't actually a predator for grass. It doesn't have to hunt the grass. Um, it's not the community because the community is all of the different populations that are found in an ecosystem. And it's not an ecosystem because that is all the living and non-living things. And we only have some of the living things being said there. Okay. Question 16. We've got a pyramid of energy. There is a lot less energy at level X in the pyramid because... Okay, a lot less energy. So it's not actually about organisms. So can I get rid of A straight away? And it says there are fewer organisms. Okay, B. Energy is stored at each level. Energy is lost at each level. Or the organisms are bigger at this level. So again... So it's not about number, it's not about the size of organisms. So we're looking about whether it's stored or lost. What you should know is when you go up from one level to the next, you lose about 90% of the energy. So it's only about 10% that gets up to the next level. So by the time you get to X, you've only got 1% of what was in Z. Okay, so it's because you lose it, not because you store it. If you store it, it could get passed on. Question 17. In which of the following would competition not not occur? Okay, so we are looking for things where we can have any form of competition that's going to impact. So rabbits grazing in a field, well, all the rabbits will be trying to eat the same grass. So that, in fact, will be intraspecific competition, so quite intense, so it's not A. Owls and foxes hunting for mice, well, they are both hunting for the same thing, so that is competition, that's... Out, that's out, interspecific that time. Daisies and dandelions growing in a lawn, same deal. We have two different plants, but they are all competing for the same moisture, the same soil space, uh, nutrients, etc, etc. And algae and fish in a lock, no, because they don't want the same thing at all. The algae need kind of light and space and the fish are going to be feeding on the algae and that's got nothing to do with competition. Okay. Question 18, again, not in the course anymore. This is in the NAT 4, um, but I'll run it so that you can make sure you're happy with it. Following diagrams represent part of the nitrogen cycle. Which diagram shows the correct sequence of events in the nitrogen cycle? Okay, so nitrogen cycle is that you have plant and animal, uh, which is broken down into ammonium, and then the ammonium is broken to nitrites and then built back up to nitrates, and then the nitrates goes into the animals and plants again. So correct, one is A, but you don't need to worry about it. Question 19. Students used a quadrat to estimate the number of buttercups in a field. They threw the quadrat randomly three times in the area in order to improve the reliability of the results they could have. Okay, so just be very, very clear. Reliability here means we are looking for repeats. Find something which is increasing the number of repeats. So ask another group of students to check they'd counted correctly. Doesn't give you anything. Throw in the quadrat 10 instead of 3. That would work. Only throw the quadrat where conditions were an optimum. That would be cheating. And use a smaller quadrat for each of their samples. That would not help at all because that would reduce their information. So B. Okay. Last question in the paper. Table below compares the rate of extinction of mammal species over two different time periods. Uh, we've got 1500, 1900 and 1900 to 2000. The ratio of extinction rates between, now just be really careful here, it is the second number compared to the first number. So it's actually 90 to 4.5. Okay. Um, because you might have been tempted to write it down the way it's been given in the table and gone 4.5 to 90, but it needs to be this one to that one. So it has to be 90 to 4.5. Um, and then you need to cancel that. So the easiest way is just to divide both of them by 4.5 because that's then 1 and this is now 20. So 20 to 1. So 
D. And OK, didn't actually need to pause this on the way through, so there may be some extra waffling that shouldn't be there. Um, that's the page.